Hello, I am Be Better Gamer. Welcome to Be Better Gamer Wrestling. This channel is focused and dedicated on my love of wrestling video games. Thank you for clicking on this video. I am playing Virtual Pro Wrestling 2, which was developed by Aki Corporation, released in January of 2000. Part of the Aki series of wrestling video games that includes WCW NWO World Tour, WCW NWO Revenge, WrestleMania 2000, WWF No Mercy, Virtual Pro Wrestling 64, and this game, Virtual Pro Wrestling 2. If this is your first time clicking on this video, I do Let's Plays where I talk about the historical context of what was going on at the time in wrestling, as well as, you know, dissect and analyze the gameplay of the games I'm playing. And if this is, uh, if you're a returning subscriber, I should say, uh, yes, I've been gone a while again, but I'm gonna be releasing an update very soon on the status of my channel, so stay stay tuned I have a lot of big things planned I know I keep disappearing and reappearing disappearing and reappearing but a lot of that's gonna stop it's gonna be basically me being here forever uh, because now long story short this is my full-time job this is my full-time job bringing you these YouTube videos now so uh, very exciting stuff to happen but I have to keep working on the projects I already started and part of the things I was doing in virtual pro wrestling too with my Let's Play series is unlocking all the characters. So this episode, I will be showing you how I unlocked Mark Kerr, who is an MMA fighter. Crazy history. So going into this video, I chose Kazushi Sakuraba to unlock him. Because in order to unlock Mark Kerr, you have to use anyone from the Pride roster uh, in Royal Rose Secession mode and clear the month of October and then defeat Mark Kerr in the special match that follows. So there's four wrestlers that are part of the Pride roster. That's Nobuhiku Takada, Kazushi Sakuraba, Ensign Inoue, and Rumina Sato. I chose Sakuraba and for my partner I chose Takada. Um, now the reason why I chose Sakuraba is because he's the one I was most familiar with. My knowledge of MMA isn't as extensive, but since I watch a lot of New Japan Pro Wrestling, I'm familiar with Sakuraba. And you know, I've heard of his history as the Gracie Hunter, the Gracie Killer. Um, so I chose him. I was expecting to do a lot of research about Sakuraba and talk about him for the majority of this episode. But when I started doing research for Mark Kerr, who I never really knew about, to be honest, I was blown away with his story and everything I learned about him. So I will be talking a lot about Mark Kerr. Maybe down the line, I'll focus on Sakuraba. Right now you see me fighting Masahiro Kakihara, who's an All Japan wrestler at this time. Um, and here you see Sakuraba, he's an MMA fighter, so he's got the MMA fighting style that's in Virtual Pro Wrestling 2 that didn't make it to WrestleMania, I mean, uh, WWF No Mercy. The MMA fighting style is very cool in this game, and even though I don't have a lot of knowledge of MMA and the history and everything that goes into it, I love playing as that fighting style in this game. It's so cool that they introduced that mechanic in this game. So your weak grapples, you're basically, your weak grapples are kind of like, think Goldberg and, uh, you know, WCW NW Revenge, how he used to do the combos. So your weak grapples, when you do an A grapple, you do a grapple move, which could be a weak grapple or a strong grapple. They gave the MMA fighters uh, that little advantage. If you press B, uh, you'll do those striking combinations like a lot of the martial arts fighters use. If you do a strong grapple, you do the MMA takedown, and then you can either try to punch the guy out with your B button, your attack button, or you can do a submission hold. Uh, if you're right here, you see I'm doing it to Kakihara, but I got the rope break. We're in pro wrestling rules. Here we go, doing it again. See, I'm, I'm hitting him. You can make them submit, so what happens if, if you keep punching them, eventually they'll turn around to their uh, where they're face down, and then you could choke them out or keep punching them to try to make them submit. Here I throw on the arm bar, and it's really cool, it's really fun. The MMA fighters are kind of OP against the wrestlers, you know, so even though Maki Masahiro Kakehara, he's a, a martial artist, he's a, he's a mixed fighter in this. He has pro wrestling moves and martial, he has a martial arts combination, but he doesn't do the MMA strong grapple. Um, the MMA fighters are, it's I mean, in my opinion, it's no contest. When you're playing as an MMA fighter in this game against a regular wrestler, chances are you have the advantage just because their submission skills so high. 
Most of their moves are submission based. That strong grapple is really hard to time and counter and get out of. And if they counter your strong grapples, they'll automatically go into their submission back grapple. Um, so they're pretty, they're pretty fun to play as, uh, especially Sakuraba. He's got a lot of arm submissions. Uh, here I'm working on the leg because I wanted to kind of beat Kakihara with a leg submission because he throws so many strikes. Um, you know, leg strikes. There he is grasping his leg. Let's see if I can do that rolling leg lock on him, get him to tap out. Um, so yeah, so playing Royal Rose Succession mode, you're still following the, the All Japan schedule, so you're still playing a lot of wrestling matches, but as the MMA fighters, I've already unlocked the boss Rutin in one of my earlier Let's Plays. You can see me play more there with the MMA fighting style, so it's really cool. Um, you have to play all the way to October to get to Mark Kerr, but I'm starting with this match because this is actually the end of September match. I just defeated Kakihara, so you're going to see another character is going to be, well, I'm going to attempt to unlock another character, I should say, and that's going to be Hickson Gracie. Hickson Gracie is an unlockable character in this, obviously part of the prestigious and legendary Gracie family. Even someone like me, I don't know anything about MMA. I still know of the Gracie name and, you know, the Gracie legacy. Again, I don't know maybe the big matches or anything like that, but you've heard of the Gracies if you've heard of MMA, you know what I mean? And that's another reason why I chose Sakuraba was because, because he was the Gracie hunter, the Gracie killer. He was the first one to get these big victories over members of the Gracie family and that established him as being one of the best MMA fighters ever. So in order to unlock Hickson Gracie, you can use anyone from Pride or Rings. And Rings is another stable in this game from MMA fighters. So I thought I could do a twofer here. I could unlock, since I have to use someone from Pride to unlock Mark Kerr, I figured, yeah, I'll do a twofer. I'll unlock Hicks and Gracie at the end of August, and then I can unlock Mark Kerr at the end of October. Uh, spoiler alert, you're gonna see, because the match goes very quickly, doesn't go quite as planned. So at the beginning there, they showed the MMA rule set that we're gonna be fighting under. You can change the different rule sets of this game, which is another cool feature. Um, and you can change it to go uh, rounds, uh, points, uh, knockouts only, submissions only, you know, time limit for each round or if it's only one round. Uh, so this match, I took a screenshot and I translated it on my own. Uh, it's two rounds. There's no rope escape. There's uh, takedowns are free, meaning if you do a takedown, it doesn't cost any points. Quick matches on, which is going to be my downfall. Uh, you get saved by the gong if you go to the round limit. Time limit is 10 minutes for the round. Uh, if you get knocked down, and again, it's no points, uh, give up is on, and there's no bloodshed, no time decision. So I think this is based off of Pride rules. I'm not sure. Uh, when I was doing research on Pride, their rules kind of changed throughout the years. Uh, and you know, MMA, all different promotions all have kind of different mo um, rules and different rules for different matches and you know, different stipulations. So. I'm fighting Hicks and Gracie. Obviously, that doesn't look like Hicks and Gracie because, like a lot of the other characters in this game, you need to change their outfit and appearance after you unlock them. Um, so, I was hoping to do that, and here I am keeping my distance. I know, see, here I'm playing a little bit more safe because I know quick match is on. And see, right there, rear naked choke, it could be done with. It could be, and there's, and there's no rope break. And so, it's like if they keep putting submissions on you, after two or three submissions, you're done. So I'm trying to play it safe, but he's countering every grapple I throw at him, and I'm just throwing weak grapples. He's countering it. That's already two rear naked chokes. I know if he counters me one more time, I'm kind of done for. So I'm a little nervous right now, even though I haven't really taken a lot of damage if this was, say, a normal match. Because this is under the quick match rules, quick match basically means you're more likely to give up faster. Sometimes you can give up, in the first submission hold you're thrown under. Um, I think it might be based on the power of the submission move as well as the skill level of the uh, wrestler you're playing as if they have a very high submission ranking, you know, like expert, if they're expert in their submission skills. So <laughs> I'm trying to be the Gracie killer here, but I'm very nervous, honestly. And there we go, another counter, another counter 
and I think this is it. Yep, that's it. He takes me out. He takes me out. So you can do one of two things here if you lose when you're fighting a character unlock because you can only unlock a character if you beat them. If you don't beat them, then you basically have to do it all over again. You don't get a rematch. That means I would have to start all the way back from the beginning of Royal Road Secession. And even though we're only in September, we're only at the end of September, um, you know, that's 3, 6, 12, that's 18 matches I fought already. And that's about an hour and a half to two hours of playtime. And I kind of didn't want to go through all of it again. So old me, young me, would have just hit the reset button. Because if you hit the reset button, the game doesn't save. And then you can go back in and play right away and play him again so that's one way you can do a rematch you can hit the reset button but I'm older now I'm more experienced and more wise I know how to take a loss and so I just take the loss I eat the loss I thought about it for a very long time I was like you know should I just hit the reset button and not tell anyone but full disclosure I wanted to tell you guys that I'm gonna just take the loss so here you go you see me skipping ahead to October because you do have to do a tag tournament and so I go through the whole month of October. So here you're going to see me facing the last match in October before I face Hicks and Gracie. I tried to unlock Hicks and Gracie again as part of a live stream I did on Twitch. And that's something, side note, that's something I'm going to be doing more of. In the future, I'm going to be doing more live streams. Uh, I think it, right now it's on my Twitch history. You can go to my Twitch page, Be Better Gamer. Uh, and the last video I did... I, I saved it. I played for another two hours, this time on my way to unlock Akira Mita. And I run into Hicks and Gracie again at the two hour point, And I lose again. <laughs> and I take the L. I take the L because you know what? I want to prove to you guys that, you know, I don't just do a lot of research for these games, but I actually am kind of good at it. And Virtual Wrestling 2, to me, is the hardest one out of the Aki series. Um, I think Virtual Wrestling 2, the AI is the smartest, it's the most challenging, it's not cheesy like WCW NW Revenge, WCW Revenge, the computer is hard in that game because it's kind of cheesy and abuses the system and the mechanic and I think they just give a little bit of an edge to the WCW NW Revenge, you know, AI. Uh, but Virtual Pro Wrestling 2 to me is the most well balanced and it's the toughest one so when you're playing on the hardest difficulty. Even though someone like me who's been playing this for years and years and years and years, it's still challenging because I still have to be alert and careful uh, because at any moment the computer could swing the momentum into his favor and win the match. And especially with the MMA matches, which again, to be honest, even back in the day, I didn't really play a lot of. I only played a little bit to test it out, um, but at the time, I didn't know who any of those guys were. When I unlocked Mark Kerr back in 2000, I didn't know who Mark Kerr was. And that's why I love doing these Let's Plays because it gives me an opportunity to learn about these guys, to learn more about Sakuraba, to learn more about Hicks and Gracie and Boss Wooten and all these guys that are in this game. Because if you really look at the roster in Virtual Pro Wrestling 2 of the MMA fighters that they have, they're mostly all legends. It's crazy. It's crazy to think about, especially given how popular MMA is today with the UFC. Uh, at the time, in the year 2000, UFC was kind of still trying to you know become a big thing and they were having a lot of issues you know there was a whole political thing where they were trying to ban it and bar it you know from getting a competitive license a sporting license and you know you could only see it on pay-per-view and then they could only hold you know events in certain cities that would sanction them and you know it was very it was much more brutal if that's you know somehow hard you know if that's not hard to believe it was it was somehow more brutal back then than it is now and MMA, a lot of its roots are founded in Japan, and Pride was one of the most popular MMA organizations in Japan, and that's where Mark Kerr fought. He fought in Pride. It was founded in 1997 by Nobuhiku, Nobuhiko Takada. Forgive me for mispronouncing these names. I'm trying my best. And um, Nobuyuki Sakikibara. I hope I'm pronouncing that one right. Um, and... It was very popular because um, Takata already had a lot of recognition as being a top fighter coming into it, starting with UWF and New Japan, and but then venturing over to MMA and becoming this big MMA star. 
And Takata would eventually come back to New Japan and wrestle. So that's another interesting thing, another cross thing there. And Mark Kerr, so Mark Kerr, he started fighting in the late 90s. Um, he started his MMA career sort of inadvertently. He uh, was an amateur wrestler, had an amateur wrestling background. Uh, but then he got, he was, you know, suggested by a friend to try out this new MMA thing. So he went to Brazil and he won this tournament. And he swept the tournament and surprised everyone because he was an amateur. And that's where he actually got the moniker, The Smashing Machine. That's his nickname, The Smashing Machine, Mark Kerr. And again, round 2000, I didn't know who he was. I didn't even know why you were unlocking him. I figured, all right, he might be a big deal if you're unlocking him. And when I was doing research for this video, I stumbled upon a documentary called The Smashing Machine, The Life and Times of Extreme Fighter Mark Kerr. It was released in 2002 and it started recording it started recording the footage for the documentary at the end of 1999 or I would say mid 1999 going towards the end. So here's the unlock screen, it's coming up. I just defeated Akira Tao in a regular wrestling match. And the rules for this match are going to be exactly like the Hicks and Gracie match. So I'm going to be a little bit more careful in this match. Because <laughs> I've, I've gone all the way through now to October. You have to do a tournament at the end of September. It can be kind of grueling when you keep going in and out of the Royal Road Secession. But fortunately, I love this game so much, I don't mind it. Um, just having to start all over again is actually not really all that bad of an idea to me. It just gives me an excuse to play more of it. And um, I'll probably do even more Royal Road Secession um, journeys, I, I should say, <laughs> with other wrestlers that I didn't get to do during this Let's Play series uh, for my live streams. Because, again, I just love playing this game. So any excuse to keep playing it. So there's Mark Kerr, uh, the super tanning machine is what they should have called him. Uh, <laughs> again, this doesn't technically look like him. I'll show you after I unlock him what I the edits I did. Um to change him that's definitely not his face uh, his tights are sort of similar to what he wore and you could technically keep it for an alternate outfit I think the skin tone is a little too dark to be honest um, even though he is of mixed race he's his skin tone is a little bit on the lighter side even though he tanned a lot which is why I made the joke the super tanning machine because throughout different fights of his career you can tell like alright this dude was definitely probably tanning more than he was training which isn't uncommon for a lot of wrestlers and a lot of MMA fighters uh, even the Young Bucks uh, the other day I was watching the interview and they made a joke about the amount of tanning spray they use uh, throughout the year so um, but you'll see the changes I do so I've got a special going which is good uh, because if I could lock Sakuraba special on that's pretty much a win there I go jumping flipping arm bar and he's gonna tap out so again combined with the quick match and combined with the fact that it's a special I mean when you play the regular matches the special is gonna get you those wins almost automatically because the expert rating is so high and there you go I defeated Mark Kerr so now I have unlocked Mark Kerr and I'm gonna go in I'm gonna show you how I edited him and again back in 2000 when I first played this game and I unlocked Mark Kerr I thought oh, I guess he's a big deal but the documentary starts right at the tail end of 1999, and I don't want to get too much into the details and spoil too many things. Uh, I figured you should go watch it. It's very fascinating. But it's basically, it's about the rise and fall of Mark Kerr, who at that time, at this time, in you know late 1999, Mark Kerr was considered a rising star in the MMA world. A lot of eyes were on him. He had that tournament in Brazil, and then he actually fought in UFC for a little bit, but he, he didn't feel like he was gonna get compensated well enough in UFC because they were having issues with their promotion. So he actually goes to Japan and fights in Pride, and that's where he becomes a star. He becomes a big star in, 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 in Japan. He even beats Takata. Um, leading up right to before the start of the documentary where he faces off against Russian fighter Igor Volchichin. Vol Volchichin? I'm, I might be saying it wrong. I apologize. I know they said it a bunch of times in the documentary, but that's a hard last name to pronounce. He's also an MMA legend, apparently. I gotta do more research on him. Um, and he suffers his first loss. Technically, it's not a loss. They rule it a no contents because Igor threw some... 
illegal knees that were just established as being illegal for that match, but they weren't illegal in the Pride event before that. Like I mentioned earlier in the video, the rules were always changing. So here we go. I'm in the edit mode now, and I'm gonna make some changes. Now, I was going off of Shima's edit guide, which is something you can find in the description below. This was the guide I used way back in the day. This was like, I think anyone who played this game, they used that guide, because it was the only guide that edited all the wrestlers' costumes. And again, I didn't know who a lot of these guys were when I first got this game, especially the MMA guys. So I just took that, and I just went with it. But after watching this documentary and watching some of his matches, I made some other changes uh, based on what I saw and based what's in the guy. So again, I changed his skin tone, uh, his tights. So I was actually a little confused with these tights, the A29 tights, because I didn't see him wear it in any of the matches in the documentary, but he actually wore it quite a bit in the early part of his career, tights that were similar to that with the little eyes on the back. Um, they just don't say Leo on it in the real life. I don't know where the Leo comes from in the game. And he always wore these blue gloves, these blue MMA gloves, and then he usually had a knee pad on and bare feet. Um, sometimes he had two knee pads, depending, I guess, on his injuries or stuff like that. Um, so that's it's, it's a pretty simple outfit, honestly. A lot of the MMA fighters are, but it looks pretty much like him. And, um, you know, again, going back to that fight with Igor, so he loses this fight, it gets ruled a no contest, but that's kind of the the beginning of the downward spiral of Mark Kerr. Uh, before even that match, he was already battling with an addiction to painkillers. And about a month after that match happens, he ODs and he gets put into the hospital. Remember, the documentary just started filming all this. They just started filming like in August of 1999, July of 1999. And then all of a sudden, the guy who's been undefeated and is being claimed to be one of the best rest, uh, MMA fighters in Pride and one of the best MMA fighters in the world, so much potential, we quickly see how it all falls apart. And so there's a lot of stories going on in the documentary that I think were just fascinating. You know, this unexpected and sudden fall of a rising star. You know, the, the, the documentary was filmed by John um, Hams. I think I'm saying that right. I might be saying it wrong. There's a Y in there and the Y might be silent. Um, and he met Mark Kerr through a screening from one of his other movies. And he was a friend of a friend of Mark Kerr. And, he, they, you know, the friend of a friend was like, hey, you should do a documentary on this guy because he's become the next big thing. Wouldn't it be great to capture all that? Capture his rise, capture his big fights that he's going to win. And it just goes completely in the opposite direction. And in the documentary, you see him struggle with drugs and painkillers. And it's it was very... It was heartbreaking because unlike a lot of other documentaries where you see a lot of other athletes who struggle with um, drugs and, and addictions, uh, Mark Kerr just seemed like one of the nicest guys around. You know, there's a this, this scene right in the beginning of the documentary where he's talking to like this little old lady in, in this doctor's office. He explains to her what he does and how he basically beats the crap out of other guys for, for money. She's like, oh, that's so violent. And you how could you do that? He's like, well, no, it's my job. And we're really just trying to see who's the best. And, uh, you know, I don't really have any ill will to anyone. Like, do you hate the people you fight? He's like, no, never. I never hate the people I fight. And even when he loses to Igor, there's a scene with him and Igor where they're just like chatting it up. Or like, yeah, you hit me in the back of my head. That was a really good punch. Yeah. It gave me a bunch of stitches. Like, <laughs> and, uh, you know, it's, it's amazing. It's so it's sad to see. It's like, and you think, all right, it's just going to be one hiccup. You know, the one loss, and then he ODs. All right, you know, this is probably a long time coming with his addictions, but he starts, he gets invited to the Pride 2000 Grand Prix tournament. And this is also a notable tournament I learned in the history of MMA because it was the first major tournament that Pride did uh, that took a lot of the world's top fighters at the time, and mostly Pride fighters, and had them in the tournament. Boss Rutan and Ken Shamrock. Uh, were sitting in on commentary. The tournament had Hoist Gracie against Takata. It also had Hoist Gracie against Sakuraba, which is one of the more infamous matches because, again, Sakuraba the Gracie killer. Uh, Igor Volvshichan was in it. Alexander Otsuka, Ensign Inoue, Mark Coleman, who plays a big role in the documentary because he's actually really close friends 
with Mark Kerr. And that's another fascinating story too in the documentary is his friendship with Mark Coleman, who himself is kind of having this turning point in his own journey as an MMA fighter. Uh, and you know, the tournament itself is a pivotal moment in Pride and MMA. So you have all these things getting captured in this documentary and it's just fascinating. Uh, real quick, so after I unlock a character, I always change their outfit and I do a quick match. I'm gonna fight Ensign Inoue, who Mark Kerr fights in the Pride Tournament. And I'm kind of deciding on the rules here right now. I'm basing them basically on the rules from the Hickson match and the Kurt match. But I'm changing quick match, I'm turning quick match off, because <laughs> I don't want to lose quickly. Or I don't want my opponent to lose quickly. And I changed, I think I put like blood on, and what else did I change? I think that's it, I think that's all I changed. So I kept it pretty similar to the rules that were there earlier. Um, but yeah, so all this stuff happens sort of around Mark Kerr, and he kind of misses it out. I misses it out. He kind of misses out on all of it because of his own demons. And I don't want to spoil what happens if you don't know about it already. But I would say watch the documentary. It's, I found it on YouTube. Okay, it's an HBO documentary, but I found it on YouTube. It's not on HBO now, uh, which is surprising, but, you know, who knows why. Uh, but The Smashing Machine, The Life and Times of Extreme... It was a very sobering documentary. I mean, the dude was like 30, 31 when he was all the way at the top of the mountain and, just, and everything just came crashing down. And it makes you realize the power of the choices we make. Obviously, you know, you always want to say, yeah, don't do drugs. But sometimes it's not that easy. Um, you know, addiction is a disease for a lot of people and it can be a tough thing. Um, it's really about, I think, you know, your support system, who you have around you um, that can help you get through your addiction. At the same time, you know, I always say people aren't going to change unless they want to change. And it's, it's just sad to see because he was he was coming up at the time where MMA was becoming so hot. Again, a lot of those guys that you see in the documentary are like Hall of Famers in the MMA. Igor and Mark Coleman and Boss Rutan. And Ken, he trained with Boss Rutan. Boss Rutan trained them for the matches, you know, going into the tournament. And, um, you know, you see that. And this was at a time where it was like a turning point in MMA. Not only that. I was doing further research on Mark Coleman and you know I said earlier he was an amateur wrestler so it's like oh why what did he go for the Olympics or anything he could have he could have been part of the 1996 Olympic team and we all know for wrestling fans who was on that 1996 Olympic team it's true it's true it's damn true it was Kurt Angle Mark Kerr trained I kid you not, as I looked this all up, he trained with Kurt Angle. They were part of the Fox Catcher team. You know, the whole thing with John DuPont and, you know, Dave Schultz, the Schultz brothers, um, you know, and then John DuPont ends up killing Dave Schultz and Schultz and the Fox Catcher team splits and Kurt Angle goes with the Dave Schultz wrestling team. Mark Kerr actually stayed with the Fox Catcher team and lost out on his chance to compete in the Olympics because he lost to Kurt Angle in the qualifiers. So this guy in a short span of his, well not in a short span but in the in the early part of his life and his career in, in amateur wrestling and MMA, he was almost at the center of all these major things happening. You know, a month after he loses to Kurt Angle, Kurt Angle goes and wins the Olympic gold medal and becomes Kurt Angle. You know, he when after he loses to Igor, he spirals into you know, his drug addiction gets worse and he doesn't capture that lightning in the bottle that he had in all his victories and he loses a lot and then everyone else around him becomes these MMA legends and MMA stars. UFC becomes a big deal, you know, after he leaves UFC and it's just all these things and it was, it was very enlightening, it was very sad and it was very, it was amazing how all this time when I've had this game or I've played this game, I didn't know who this guy was and I was just enraptured by his story it would make like a great movie i think or a great play or something it's just again i can't talk about it enough you know if you really want to find out a lot about you know the smashing machine mark kerr watch that documentary it, it was it was fascinating 
and I expected to be talking about Sakuraba and his stuff in New Japan Pro Wrestling, but I wanted to talk about Mark Kerr because I learned about it, so I wanted to spread that to you and say, you should learn about this guy. You, If you don't have a lot of knowledge about MMA fighters, or even if you know a lot about MMA, you've never heard of Mark Kerr, beat up on his story, man. It's fascinating. It's one of the sadder stories about an athlete that I've ever learned or discovered. And, um, you know, pretty pretty cool that while I'm sort of wrapping up, there's only a few more characters left. I gotta try to unlock Hickson. Hickson Gracie. I gotta unlock a- Akira Mita. And then I gotta unlock um, Alexander Carolyn. And I think that's it for the characters I gotta unlock. And then I gotta figure out what else I'm gonna do with my Let's Plays. Oh, I'll probably do, like, you know, the unlocking videos for all the other outfits and modes and stuff like that. I want to do like tutorial videos on that. I'll probably do, you know, highlight the championship belts and all the little belts that are in this game. There's a lot of cool features in this game that didn't make it to No Mercy, so I'll probably talk about all that stuff. But yeah, there I go. I choke out uh, Ensign Inoue, sort of redeeming Mark Kerr. I didn't get to do my special, but it's basically that falling takedown where he does the smashing punches, uh, which is a really cool special in its own right. I think Aki Man had that special in WWE NW Revenge, if I'm not mistaken. Um, but yeah, Mark Kerr, the Smashing Machine, there he is, unlocked him. A condensed video, I had to play a lot of matches to get to him, man. And it's gonna be even more to get to the other guys. Akira Mead, you gotta go through the whole Royal Road Secession. But I hope you like this, let me know what you think. I hope you like this video, I'm almost done with these Let's Plays for Virtual Pro Wrestling 2 for the character unlocks. And uh, I got some cool content planned for December leading up to Wrestle Kingdom, Kingdom, so stay tuned for that. Very excited about that. But yeah, you know what to do. You've been on YouTube before. Like, comment, subscribe. And until next time, I'm Be Better Gamer. Keep watching all the wrestling. Thank you.